So it isn't exactly Masterpiece Theater, but here we are back again to discuss theme and other issues in Frankenstein. And last time we left off at the end of Chapter 8, and so we are going to begin talking about Chapter 9 this time. And again, if I were in a classroom, I would be standing before the class, and I would be talking about what's going on in the book, and you would be responding. Now, unfortunately, in this venue, you can't respond to me directly, and you have to do it later on discussion boards and in blogs. But I am nevertheless going to sit before the class and continue talking. And of course, in a classroom, we have the give and take, which is something that I absolutely um, love. But again, we're going to start here at Chapter 9 and work forward. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to mention, and then I touched on these before, and I think one's going to probably be fairly new. But one is the romantic idea that the universe is benevolent and nature is kind. Now, I mentioned before that Victor takes solace in nature and is separated from nature when he is in his uh, workshop of filthy creation, making his offspring. But after uh, his illness and then going back to, uh, to his home in Geneva, and then with the execution of Justine for the death of William, he again begins to seek comfort and nature. And that is a very romantic idea. He even goes so far as in chapter 9 to uh, talk of the Alps and say that, hang on, let me find my spot here, to say that um, um, best laid pro uh, plans of mice and, uh, uh, and English teachers on page 95 in my book, but about halfway of chapter 9, he says, um, But it was augmented and rooted sublime by the mighty Alps, whose white and shining pyramids and domes towered above all as belonging to another earth, the habitation of another race of beings. And again, this mo motif goes on. And he, um, he also talks about imperial nature in chapter 10. Nature is able to give him great comfort, which is, uh, as I see it, a hypocrisy on his part because he strove to penetrate the secrets of nature and expose them. And when he did that, he created his poor, misbegotten offspring. But there is another theme that I want to talk about, and I don't think that I've dis discussed this before, and it is the duality of the creatures, or, or excuse me, the characters in this book, and yes, the creature as well. Uh, as chapter uh, 9 begins, as a matter of fact, in the first paragraph of chapter 9, Victor says, I wandered like an evil spirit. Now, evil spirit is what he calls his creature, and likewise, his creature is a wanderer. But later down in that paragraph, Victor also says, I had begun life with benevolent intentions and thirsted for the moment what I should put them into practice and make myself used to, useful to my fellow beings. And he also said just before that, excuse me, my heart overflowed with kindness and the love of virtue. Now, interestingly enough, in chapter 10, when he finally meets his uh, creature, the creature says to him, and this is in chapter 10, a couple pages over, um, the creature says to him, Believe me, Frankenstein, I was benevolent. My soul glowed with love and humanity. So Victor and the creature are saying the same things. And interestingly enough, in a kind of diverse way, they're both made miserable and alone by the same, uh, for the same reason, which is the creation of the creature. Victor became miserable. He was sad after his mother died, of course, but he became miserable after his creature came to life, and of course the creature had no sentient uh, 
Well, no sentience at all before he was brought to life. And so you begin to have that duality between um, shared between Victor and his creature. The, the creature is an extension of Victor. He reflects perhaps the negativities within Victor that Victor does not want to acknowledge. Now, was Shelley conscious of this? Did Shelley say, I am going to insert this duality into my characters and literally make the creature a reflection of Victor? Well, we don't know. Can we assume so? It's kind of uh, uh, risky to start assuming things like that, but yet it is there on the page. And so I think that we need to assume that, yes, she knew that she was say, that Victor was saying this and the creature was saying this as well. But how far the duality goes, perhaps not even Mary Shelley um, understood that. And uh, going back then, uh, I kind of digressed a little bit talking about the duality because I wasn't finished talking about the uh, solace in nature. She, uh, oh, okay, I'm going to totally confuse you here. One more thing about the uh, duality. Victor keeps saying he's the murderer. The murderer. <laughs> um, he says on page 93 of my book, um, I not indeed, but in effect, was the true murderer. And that is in uh, chapter 9. So even though his creature was the one who murdered William, and by default then murdered Justine, Victor says, it is my fault. So that is a part of, uh, of a duality as well. And then I want to go back to the, uh, the nature aspect. In chapter 10, Victor is feeling peaceful. Um, he said the clouds bade him at peace. But the second paragraph of chapter 10, he says, where had they fled the next morning uh, I awoke? When the next morning I awoke? Nature is not comforting to him anymore. And this, of course, is foreshadowing because very soon, for the first time in years have passed uh, since he created his offspring, he's going to meet his creature. And his creature is alone and wants Victor, and he asks Victor to make, his, uh, make a mate for him. And again, there's some duality in that, but we're going to see that later uh, in, in the book. And Victor um, keeps talking about the wandering spirits and so on and so on. And so again, he is seeking that solace in nature. At this point, though, it disappears and he comes face to face with his creature. I'm going to be back in a minute.